Hello, my name is Ben Modic. I'm a support engineer here at Go Engineer. Today, we're going to be looking at using the edge flange feature, specifically using the edge flange feature on non-parallel faces or non-parallel edges. You know, when you typically want to use uh, an edge flange along multiple edges, your sides, your faces are on the same plane. Uh, so I want to look at kind of creating the, using the best method to create flanges that are mitered uh, on a face that is maybe angled uh, in relation to this back face here. So uh, just a quick uh, you know, run through of the edge flange feature. Uh, with a sheet metal component, I can come up here, click on edge flange, and when my faces are all on the same plane, I can easily come through and click three, three edges to add the same, a similar edge flange profile to. And, uh, you know, we, we can see that it's creating that, that miter, that cut for us um, with a, uh, a given spacing. And, you know, that's pretty simple, so that's pretty straightforward. But a little more advanced, or maybe not as straightforward, would be to create, um, you know, a similar, uh, similar situation here at the top, or a similar feature. We can't do that in one flange feature, but we can with two individual flange features, and we're gonna we're gonna look through that right now. Okay, the first thing I want to do, I want to create another edge flange. And I want to start off by creating that edge flange on that angled face, or on that angled edge. So I'm going to do that, and again I can apply an edge flange here. At the same time, uh, the, the requirement is these faces, these edges, need to be parallel with each other. Um, so if right now if I try to pick this back face, you can see what's going to happen here. It's giving us uh, the same the same edge flange profile and parameters here that are located in my edge flange property manager, but that's incorrect. I, and I want this back edge flange to be parallel with these two sides. So in order to do that, I'm going to create this last flange here, the one that I just selected. I'm going to delete that from my selection, and I'm going to create that last one uh, in a and a new edge flange feature. In order to get these flanges to, uh, you know, mitered in the corners, I do need to do a little bit of work here. So to edit the flange profile, I'll need to come up here and I'll need to select each individual flange, um, you know, at a time, and come in here and click on the Edit Flange Profile button. Now this lets me go in and really dive in and define the shape of this edge flange. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to add in my 45 degree, just going to add a new line. I'm going to use smart dimension, make that 45 degrees. I'm going to add the overall length, so that would be 50 millimeters. I have my angle set. All I need to do now is come in and trim that flange you'll notice the sketch is now fully defined. So I'm going to click on back. That flange is set. I can now go in and modify the second edge. Similar thing here. I can start a smart dimension here first if I wanted to. Set my overall length. And we'll start the line in the corner. And come out. And I'll set my angle one more time. use the trim entities command and I'll make sure that the sketch is fully defined again. So at this point both flanges are 50 millimeters from the back they both have a 45 degree miter and I'm going to click finish to exit out of that feature. So we kinda we have the starting point uh, here. Last thing we need to do is come back in and add a new edge flange and I'm going to add it on this back end here, this back wall. And, you know, we could guesstimate the angle here if we wanted to. But other than a, a better solution, 
and the point of this video is to drive the angle of that flange off of an existing face. So to do that, I'm going to click in this box here so I can highlight this box. It turns blue. It's asked me to select a face. And you'll notice when I select a face, I'll have an option to set that face perpendicular or parallel. So I'm going to click on the existing flange that we just made. And that angle is now, is now set, it's now driven off of the previous flange. Okay, so we want that parallel to the face. You'll notice it does not miter those corners for me. And notice that the flange is a little too low. So it's, it's not offset to be flush with the existing edge flange. To do that, I need to change the edge flange position. Right now it's currently blind. I want to set that up to vertex. And you'll notice now that I can select a new starting point for that flange. So in this case, I'm going to select the vertex where the other flange begins to form and those faces are now flush. Okay. Next thing I can do, I can modify the edge flange length. So to do that, instead of just having it blind again, I can do up to vertex again, and I can select the far side of that miter, and that holds that edge flange now to the exact length where I need it to be. Last but not least, I need to edit the flange profile one more time on this one so I can add that miter in. I'm going to go ahead and sketch in my 45 degrees. I'll draw another line. I'm using Smart Dimension again, but another option to fully define the sketch would be to add a parallel relation between the line and the existing edge. And I'll use the Trim tool. And you'll notice the part, the sketch here is underdefined. Uh, before I go in and finish this feature, I want to make sure that my the edge flange length is set correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and click on back because I want that to be driven. So you'll notice it readjusts my flange for me. And everything else looks fine. I'm going to click on the green check here to finish this feature. And we are now able to see mitered edge flanges here on these angled faces, these angled walls. So if I come back in and do some, I can just test to see the, um, just to make sure that the feature is updating properly. I'm going to come in and modify my initial base flange sketch. I'm just going to reduce this to 100 millimeters. Click the accept button and you'll notice the part updates and rebuilds exactly how to expect it to. I hope you enjoyed that tip. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you on the next one.